Hey, my name's Miranda and today I'm going to do the Women's Prize for Fiction tag, um, which was created by Simon Savage over at Savage Reads. Um, he is one of my favourite booktubers and I love this prize. So even though it, this tag was designed to be done before the 2020 winner was announced, um, I'm doing it afterwards because I am perpetually late for everything. So the first question is, which was the first Women's Prize winner you read? Um, when did you read it and what did you think of it? So the first one I read was How To Be Both by Ali Smith, um, which was, it won in 2015. I read it when I was 16 and I was too small. <laughs> no, it was, um, I did not really like it that much. So How To Be Both follows two timelines, I think, it's been a while since I read it. Um, one in medieval Italy, maybe, and one in kind of contemporary, maybe Britain. I can't remember. The way that it's done is that the two perspectives are completely separate halves of the book and different um, versions of the book were printed so that you would get, it would be a kind of lucky dip as to which version you got printed first in your edition, which is all very interesting obviously. Um, but I didn't really get it at all. It didn't really grab me or um, interest me particularly. I can't remember anything about it. Um, and it's kind of put me off Ali Smith since then, to be honest, um, which is a shame because I feel like, you know, her, her books sound interesting, but I'm not sure. I'm still a bit scared of her writing because of that experience with How To Be Both. The second question is, which author have you read because of the prize that has become a favourite? Um, now for this, I can't really remember which authors I read because of the prize um, and then they became favourites, or and which, which authors I read and became favourites and then I found out that they had been involved in the prize as well. One of my favourite authors is Sarah Moss and I originally read Ghost Wall um, because it was shortlisted or longlisted. I can't remember, for the 2018 Women's Prize. And I absolutely adored it. I really loved it. It's really stuck with me and it convinced me that Sarah Moss is a writer that I think is so interesting and has a real way of creating a tiny story that says so much, um, which she also does in this one, Summer Water, which I read in August and loved even more than Ghost Wall. Um, and I've also got the tidal zone um, of hers, which is going to be um, one that I read fairly soon. So yeah, she's definitely a favourite author that I want to read everything she's ever written. <laughs> um, and I found her because of the prize. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie is one of my absolute favourite authors. Um, I didn't discover her through the prize, but she has won it at least once, I think, um, and been shortlisted. So um, even though I haven't I didn't discover her through the prize. I don't think um, she's another one that I love. Similarly with Madeline Miller, um, I read The Song of Achilles, um, not knowing that it had won the Women's Prize, um, and it is one of my all-time favourite books. I love it so much. And Circe was also shortlisted last year, and that's another one that I totally love. It's just more reasons I love the Women's Prize, even though it didn't introduce me to these authors. Um, the fact that they are appreciated and recognised within it makes me love it even more, if that makes sense. The third question is, which favourite author of yours has yet to win the prize? Now, this is a slightly difficult question for me because I tend to um, move around quite a lot within my reading. There are very few authors where I've read lots of their work and can safely say that they're my favourite authors, um, but um, people that I know I love, even though I've only read a few of their books, who haven't won the prize include, again, Sarah Moss. Um, again, she's been nominated a few times, but um, or shortlisted a few times, but hasn't won. Another one is Bernadine Evaristo. Um, obviously, she didn't win this year. I have read Girl, Woman, Other and Mr. Lover Man by Bernadine Evaristo, and I adore her writing style so much. I think she's another author who I will love everything she writes. Um, and she hasn't won. Another favourite author of mine is Celeste Ng. So um, I think she's only published two novels, Everything I Never Told You and Little Flowers Everywhere. And I adored them both. I just love her 
characters and the way that she can describe a character and invoke a whole person um, in very few words. I think it's absolute genius. Um, but she, I don't think she's ever even been nominated for the prize, which is weird to me because I think she's brilliant. But what do I know? I'm not a prize person. Fourth question is, which long-listed, short-listed or winning novel has surprised you the most and why? I think I have two answers for this. First being The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock by Imogen Hermes Gower, um, which is a historical novel set in, I think, the late Georgian period. I have a really terrible memory for books, I'm sorry. I love historical fiction with my whole heart because of books like The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock. I find that they're quite few and far between. There are lots and lots of the kind of, you know, gothic type, um, slightly supernatural, dark historical novels, um, but I find them quite hit and miss for me. So there are a lot of ones that I really, really love um, that make me keep wanting to seek out more um, and others that don't really do anything at all for me. And The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock was one that I absolutely loved, which was a surprise because even though I love historical fiction, it is quite a hit and miss genre for me. The second answer for this is um, Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeleine Tien, which was long listed in 2017. This book is about um, the Tiananmen Square um, demonstrations in China and it's quite long and very, um, what's the word, broad, sprawling, epic. I feel like I'm a book reviewer, darling. I read this quite a while ago, so I don't remember a lot about it. I just remember that, again, the sense of historical setting is so incredibly well done. I really need to reread Do Not Say We Have Nothing soon because I absolutely loved it when I read it. And I think that it's one that I will get even more from now because I will actually remember what it's about because I don't remember anything of it apart from that it's got violence in it. And there's a bit where they escape from getting killed on a motorbike. Are you sold? The fifth question is maybe my favourite, and it is, if you could be a judge, which four women would you want to judge with and why? So I spent quite a long time um, deciding on my choices. Um, and I find it very difficult with this kind of question, um, you know, like, which people living or dead would you have dinner with or whatever, because I always forget people. <laughs> this is gonna be a theme of this video. Miranda's memory is shit. The first woman I would choose is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who, in case you don't know, is, um, I think she's a US Congresswoman, maybe. She's a US politician and she's great. Um, I've heard her speak and she is so incredibly passionate and eloquent and just, she's like a ball of fire flaming towards evil fascist old men and I adore her. Um, also she's incredibly intelligent and I feel like, you know, with me on the team, you'd need that. The second person is my granny. Um, she's a writer and she has also read so many books. Um, she's a massive reader and um, I love her to death, basically. She's very cool. Um, <laughs> she lives all alone in her little um, cottage in Devon in the middle of nowhere um, with chickens and she's just and loads of cats she's just a legend and she knows a lot about books so what more could you want from someone really the third person is someone I've already mentioned in this video and that is Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie again she is like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez she is so eloquent um, her TED talks are incredible her one on um, I think it's called The Danger of a Single Story is just amazing and it's sort of the reason why I am studying post-colonial literature. I just love her. I just love her. I think her writing is incredible, her knowledge of history and literature is incredible and I want her to judge the prize with me. The last person is Maggie Smith. <laughs> um, I just think she's great. We're not going to talk about, you know, she who must not be named, but Maggie Smith as Professor McGonagall is the love of my life um, and again she's someone with a lot of life experience, she's very cool, 
I don't really have anything more to say about that. I just like her a lot. Anyway, that's it. Question number six is, which lesser known favourite author of yours would you like us all to read and which book would you recommend? So for this, um, I have to admit, this author, I've only read one of her books. Um, I don't even know if she's got any others. Um, I bloody hope so, because why, why don't I know this? I should check this out. Sadly, she has not written anything else. The book I would recommend is English Animals by Laura Kay. I, <laughs> I love this book so much and I think it deserves so much more love. English Animals is about a girl called Mirka who is from Slovakia and she moves to England and goes to live with a couple in their massive kind of country house where they do um, shooting and weird English stuff, um, including taxidermy. And she becomes very good at taxidermy. She gets involved with um, this business. Um, but also she gets involved with the relationship between these two people who she is living with. It's about Englishness and being an outsider and it's very funny, it's got gayness in it. I don't know what more to tell you. Question number seven is which book published before the prize started could have won? I again have two answers for this. The first one is The Awakening by Kate Chopin. I studied this for my A-levels and I love it so much and I think it, it fits perfectly with what the Women's Prize is. It's about um, a woman in I think turn of the century New Orleans um, called Edna and she is basically having trouble with her marriage um, and her own mental health and her attitudes towards being a mother um, and she starts having an affair and it's all about her kind of inner life and her development and what happens to her and it's just beautiful. The other book is maybe less of a good fit, it's The Woman Warrior by Maxine Hong, Hong Kingston. Um, again, I, stu I studied this at university last year um, and it's very weird. <laughs> I love it. The reason I say that it doesn't quite fit in with the Women's Prize is because it's not really fiction. It's kind of a mixture of fiction and non-fiction, um, but it's essentially a kind of memoir that takes elements of folklore and ghost stories and weaves it all together in this kind of weird moving narrative that is all kinds of things at once. It has so many different themes that it explores like being um, a second generation immigrant um, and language and feeling silenced and learning a new language, all that, loads of stuff. It's, it's excellent as well as being very fairy tale-esque um, and very kind of whimsical and magical. Question number eight is, which has been your favourite winner so far? The Song of Achilles, which won in 2012, is one of my favourite books of all time. Um, and that is probably my favourite winner, therefore. Um, but I also want to mention Small Island by Andrea Levy, which I read earlier this year and I adored. It's about a Jamaican couple who were part of um, the Windrush generation and moved to England um, in the late 1940s and also about um, Queenie who is their landlady um, and whose house they lodge in when she when they get there um, and it's all about the different relationships that these characters have where they've come from where they're going and it's just everything I love in a book basically it's, it's political it's character focused it's moving it's surprising it's absolutely hilarious and it's it's just excellent it's one of the best books i think i've ever read i love it so much question number nine is there a book or two which has been published since april 2020 that you would like to see on next year's shortlist i've mentioned one of them already it's summer water by sarah moss this was published in august this year and i love it so much it tells the story of one day in the scottish highlands in a holiday park um, and lots of different families who are staying there and looking out on each other while it rains um, and waiting for something to happen. Um, and something does happen. <laughs> um, 
yeah, it's brilliant. I love it so much. Um, it should be on next year's list. It just should. The other one that I would love to see is The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. Um, this is about violence against women um, in lots of different um, time periods and guises. It's um, about ghosts. Um, it's about toxic masculinity and microaggressions. It's terrifying and I love it. <laughs> and again, it should be on next year's list. The last question is, which book on this year's list would you like to win and why? Now, the winner for this year has already been announced. It is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell, which I desperately want to read. The hardback is gorgeous and I have to resist buying it every time I see it in a bookshop because it's £20 and that is obscene for a hardback, even though it's beautiful and I'm sure the book is amazing. Anyway, so this question is kind of obsolete because we all know who the winner is, um, but also I've only read one book on the shortlist anyway, which is Girl With M Woman Other by Bernadine Everisto. Obviously, having not read all the books, I couldn't judge, so I wouldn't have been able to answer this question anyway. Um, I think Girl Woman Other deserved to win. Um, I am really annoyed that it didn't win the book last year. <laughs> so annoyed. I know it did, but it should not have been joined with the Testaments because the Testaments was a bad book. <laughs> Just putting it out there. Um, I didn't like it and Bernadine Everisto deserves better than to win a joint prize with that book. Um, <laughs> so even though I don't believe in, you know, constellation prizes, um, it would have been good if she'd won this one. Um, on her own, in her own right, I think she deserves to, and that book deserves to. Um, but equally, I am so excited to read Hamnet, and I am sure I will love it. I have read I Am, I Am, I Am, um, which is Mary, Maggie O'Farrell's memoir, and I loved it. I love her writing, so I'm absolutely certain that I will love Hamnet. Um, and I'm really glad it won, because now it's more of an incentive for me to pick it up. So that is the women's prize tag. Um, thank you to Simon for creating this and encouraging more discussion around this wonderful prize. I love it so much. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Um, all the books that I talked about will be listed in the description um, with content warnings if I can find them slash remember what the hell is in them. Um, and yeah, I will see you soon.